Hello, uh, I'm making a quick tutorial on reading into Cinema 4D because I see uh, a lot of uh, very bad tutorials on YouTube or no tutorials at all or a very long tutorial made by the Maxon team which is very interesting and very complete and I uh, encourage you to, to go watch it but it's like uh, 15 hours long So maybe uh, you don't have the time to watch it. So I'm just going to rig with you this character by uh, Everfresh Design uh, to make a simple basic rig for just the body, not the face. And uh, I'm going to do it real time. So there is not going to be any editing in this video, but uh, this way uh, I can uh, share knowledge uh, with you. Okay, so what is a rig? So firstly, a rig uh, is uh, made of uh, three different parts. So first you have uh, the geometry, which is uh, our character here. Secondly, you have the joints, which are these parts inside the character that we see uh, in transparency. And to finish, we have the controllers. So what happens is that the controllers are making the joints move and the joints are making the geometry move. So if I come and grab like the feet here, it's going to move up and we can see in transparency, the joints are following the controller that is following the geometry. Um, You have to know that uh, while rigging, there are two types of uh, way to, uh, to rig uh, members. So you have the IK way, which is this way, meaning that you grab the end of the limb and then everything is following. Same thing for the arm here, but you can also switch. Where is the switch? to uh, FK, which is a forward kinematics. And in this type of uh, rig, you animate from the bottom, from the up to bottom. So from the shoulder here, then the elbow, then the hand. Uh, usually you want to rig your legs IK. This way you can just grab the character and uh, everything is going to follow. And the arms are usually rigged FK on simple rigs so that you can have very easily while elevating this arc movement for walk cycles, one cycles, and uh, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so I'm going to delete everything here. You can uh, take this character. It's a character from Maxon that you can download here. Type in Tune. And you are going to find it somewhere down here. So it's rigged by default uh, with the very good tune uh, character rig by uh, Everfresh Design. But I'm just going to to break it all, beam. And so now I just stamp the character without the eyes. So it's a bit weird, but fine. And I'm also going to erase these tags here that I don't want to have now. So this is gone this is gone and this is gone too and no subdivision okay just the character so the first piece uh, the first thing we have to do is to, uh, to set up the joints which is uh, the skeleton for the character and to do that we have to go to uh, the the character uh, menu And inside the character menu, which is not going to be displayed uh, in the video because uh, I'm not recording this much, but it's on top of C4D. So you have to go to the character menu and you can find in it the joint tool that you can see here. So you take it and you go to the uh, side view, for instance, and we're going to, to begin to uh, put the joints for the leg. So the first joint is going to go here for uh, the up leg, then the knee, then the foot. 
So in order to uh, put a joint on PC, you have to press Control, click, uh, and it puts a joint. You see that in my hierarchy here, I now have a joint. So I'm going to go down below, push again and again. So now I have three joints, you see, root, joint one, joint one, and joint two. And uh, this is my leg, but I also want to do uh, the foot. So I'm going to keep going. So control click here for the toes. And I'm going to end the right here. This is my toes end. Going back to the 3D view, you can see that my joints are in the center of the world. It's because we use an orthographic view to, um, to have more control on the position of the joints. So uh, they are put in the center of the universe in the 3D view. So now I can just go and grab my root and put it here into the center of my leg. So this is going to be my uh, left leg. So uh, it's right for us, but in the character's point of view, it's left. So you, usually you name uh, your controls, uh, joints, etc. Uh, from the point of view of your character. So I'm going to rename all of that. It's going to be L underscore a plague. And then L underscore uh, leg. Then L underscore foot. Toes. And L toes. And it's very important that uh, you keep uh, good naming of your joints because uh, on complex rigs you have a lot of joints and if you just joint one, joint two, joint three, you are going to get lost very fast. Plus, when you have a uh, right side and left side, uh, we use the uh, naming convention left or right to mirror everything on the other side while rigging so that you just have to rig one side and then you can copy it onto the other side. And if you don't name it, if you don't name it correctly, a Cinema 4D is not going to understand what you want to do. So name it. Uh, I'm going to do the spine now. So I'm going back to my side view. I'm going to grab again character joint tool. And I'm going to put a first joint uh, here for the uh, hips. Uh, maybe over here for the hips. Then one here for the spine, one here for the torso. Uh, one here for the neck, one here for the head, and the top of the head. So you can just go to the 3D view and check uh, if it's looking good. I think we are good. So I'm going to rename that. Hips, uh, spine, one, uh, This is the torso, so I don't have a spine tool. We are going to make it simple. And the neck, uh, the head, and head keep. Uh, oh, I'm going to rename that joints, and I'm going to put the leg inside the hips here. Yeah. So now I'm going to do the arm. So I'm going into the front view. And I'm going to grab again my joint tool. And I'm going to put one for the elbow. No, for the shoulder, sorry. So let me think. I'm going to put one here for the shoulder, one here for the arm. One here for the elbow, one here for the hand. Okay. So it's important to understand that the joints are stuff that you usually want to rotate like that. Uh, and usually you don't move it around like that uh, because it has to behave like a normal. Uh, articulations and uh, the articulations in your body uh, usually they rotate they don't just 
move around. So when you are building a ring, you just have to think where is my bone going to be in order for uh, my character to to behave normally. So this is what I am doing here. Uh, so I'm going to rename that uh, L shoulder L arm L far arm and 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 I'm not going to do the fingers, uh, but you have the idea now. You just have to put joints at every uh, intersection here and uh, you will have bones inside your character but uh, for this tutorial I'm just going to do uh, very simple so the shoulder is going under the torso here and you see that I have a joint that appears here meaning that I now have a connection between my torso and my shoulder if I move it back you see it disappears I will put it back, ag back again and it is here again. Um, so now I have my uh, joints for pretty much the whole body except for uh, the right side but we are going to mirror it so it's okay. So now that I have my joints, I need to put controllers onto my joints so that uh, instead of coming here and grabbing my uh, joints and move, moving them around, I can just put, uh, uh, I can just grab controllers, which are going to be splines, and move the splines around. So first thing I'm going to do is that I'm just going to grab everything here, going to the attributes, coordinates, and I'm going to freeze all. So now you see that all my coordinates are set up to zero. And into the freeze transform matrix here, you can see that I have no zero values. It's because the values that were up here uh, were copied uh, down there. Why did I do that? It's because now if I make a mistake and move this around, for instance, uh, I can just put everything back to zero and it's going back to the right place. Uh, if uh, it was not frozen, like so, and I'm moving it, now I can't find uh, anymore on the place it was before because it was 14.9, an impossible value to find, uh, so not good. When you want, when you animate, you want to have all your values starting from zero, so always freeze your, uh, your joints, geometry, uh, controllers, everything. So I'm going to build the controllers and for that I'm going to grab uh, a spline. Uh, for instance, on this one for uh, the hips. And I'm going to put it uh, on this axis and I want to come snap it onto the joint here so that it has the exact, exact same coordinates as the joint. So I'm going to activate the snapping tool over there click on the, um, uh, the options of the sampling tool. By default, it is set to points, but I want to snap on axis. So I'm going to deactivate point and activate axis. So now I can just take my object and you see it's going to snap. Snapping. Going to scale it down. And now I'm going to take a spline circle and I'm going to do the same for the spine. I'm going to snap it here. So this is my spine controller. This is my torso controller. And now I need controllers for uh, the, the arm and the shoulder. So for the shoulder, I'm going to make a rectangle for, for instance, and I'm going to put it like over here about the shoulder so that I can grab it easily later like so and I want uh, the axis to be at uh, the same coordinates as uh, 
the joint axis. So I'm going to break my spline, which is now a uh, primitive. And I'm going to break that mold by selecting them all and uh, pressing C on my keyboard. And now I can take uh, the axis tool and move the axis around without moving the geometry. And I can come snap the axis onto the shoulder. And now I'm going to make splines for the arm. So I'm going to take uh, this like so, putting it on the arm here, rotating it to match the rotation of the arm. And I'm doing the same for the rest of the arm. So I'm going to rename it all. So this is going to be my uh, hips. I'm going to duplicate it and name it pelvis, pel, pelvis. And I'm going to scale it down and maybe rotate it like so. No, I'm not going to rotate it. Uh, I'm going to grab the points to rotate it so that I don't rotate my axis. Just in order to have a clear differentiation between the two. It's just visual, you don't have to do it. Then this is going to be my spine. Uh, torso. This is going to be my left shoulder. Left arm. Left forearm. Left hand. Underscore, please. Okay. So my arm is going to be FK for work kinematics. So I want that when I grab my shoulder, it's moving my uh, elbow and my elbow is moving my hand. So to do that, I have to put the hierarchy uh, for it to work. So what it means is that I have to put my left arm into my left shoulder. So now when I grab my left shoulder, you see it's moving my arm control and so on. So under the arm, I'm going to put the forearm and then the hand. Same, the hips are going to be FK. So inside the hips, I'm going to have the pelvis, the spine, and the torso, like so. Uh, and the shoulder is going to move with uh, this part of the body. So I have to put my shoulder under my torso controller. Okay, so I have my hierarchy of controllers for the top of the body. I could make one for the neck too, and one for the head. I'm going to go and do it. So creating a new spline. I'm going to snap it here onto the neck. And it's going to be hard to grab, so I'm just going to move it up. Uh, making it smaller, like so. Breaking it with C going to the axis tool and snapping the axis onto the neck. I'm going to do another spline here and do the same for the head. So moving it up here, making it smaller. And I want that to rotate from here. So I'm going to snap the axis over here. So I'm breaking the spline, taking the axis tool and moving it down there. So it snapped, okay. I can deactivate my axis tool and my uh, stepping tool. So we see the neck and this is the head and it's still FK. So it's going another torso. So that when I grab the torso, it moves the neck. And when I grab the neck here, it's going to move the head. Um, and now for the leg, we are going to like to rig the leg uh, in uh, F in IK mode, sorry, so that I want to grab my foot. And when I move my uh, foot around, it's going to make the all the joints hierarchy here move along. So I need a controller just for the foot and one for the toes for the toes roll. 
So I'm going to make a new controller like a rectangle for instance. And I'm going to put it here. So controllers are just planes and then you have to make it look good for, uh, for your rig. But uh, I'm just going to make it as simple as possible for this tutorial to be uh, quick. So, okay. So this is my, uh, my target for my IK leg. So I'm going to rename it. Um, not going to be my target. We are going to make it even more easy. Uh, it's going to be my controller. So I'm going to rename it L foot control and wreck it. And I'm going to take my axis and put it here onto the, onto the axis of the, of the joint. So I'm going to axis mode, snap mode and snap. It is snapped. And I need a last controller for the two. And I make the mistake at some point. I think I deleted my toes hand here. I'm just going to come in here and correct it. Uh, okay, what did I do? I don't know. So she's going here. And there, like so. And I can get back to his all. Uh, and one controller, so for the toes, I'm going to take a rectangle again. I'm going to come and snap it over here, resize it. And there, I have my toes controller. Toes. Head. Toes. Control. Swing under my head foot control. Um, okay, so now I want to, uh, to rig my leg to be uh, IK. So I need to go to my uh, joints and on the first uh, member of my IK chain, I want to put an IK tag. So the tags in the Cinema 4D are all this stuff here. This is a tag, this is a tag, this is a tag, this is a tag. And in Cinema 4D, usually everything works with tags. So onto my leg, I'm going to right click, uh, rigging tag, constraint. And I'm sorry, you are not going to see very well. Uh, I don't know what to do, but it's here, rigging tag, constraint. Okay. You click it and you have a new window here with uh, your constraint uh, uh, that are available to you and you see that you have a constraint tag now onto your uh, and I made a mistake I'm sorry it's not a constraint tag that I want to put it's an IK tag so right click reading tag and you have IK here so you put IK I'm sorry uh, so you have into the attributes here the attributes of your IK tag so the end of your IK chain is going to be your uh, your ankle here uh, which is in our case our left foot joint here. Okay, so grabbing my IK tag, I'm going to slide my uh, left foot joint into the end of my chain and I'm going to uh, add the goal automatically, which creates a null object here. So now, if I uh, grab the null object and return, you see that my leg is moving. I'm going to put this null object under my uh, left foot control here. So now when I grab my left foot control, as my uh, goal is a child of the controller, when I move the controller, the leg is moving as well. Okay. Um, next, I would like my foot to uh, rotate with my uh, controller. For now, when I grab my controller and rotate it, nothing happens. I want to change that. So in order to do that, I'm going to tell Cinema 4D to uh, copy paste the coordinates of my foot controller here onto my uh, foot joint. In order to do that, I have to constrain my foot joint to follow my foot controller. So we are going to use the constraint tag. So I'm going to click onto my foot uh, joint, right click, rigging tag, and here you have the constraint tag. I'm sorry, it's out of screen. Constraint tag. 
click, you have your constraint appearing here, and we are going to, to choose the transform constraint, which is going to copy paste the coordinate from your controller onto your joint. So I'm clicking on it. And inside uh, the tab, you see I have a set of options. Uh, I'm going to maintain original on 3D offset. And uh, I'm going to follow uh, PSR, position scale rotation. You don't have to follow P, but uh, I like to do it. So, okay, I'm going to slide my foot control inside it. And now when I move my foot control, it is rotating my foot. So now what I want to do is uh, that when I rotate this, which is my toes, I want my, uh, my foot to, uh, to roll from the work cycle, to roll from here. So the toes stay on the ground and the foot rolls. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, foot, to put my um, goal under my toes control here, which means that now when I rotate this controller, it's going to rotate my, uh, my chain. And I made a mistake uh, into the uh, constraint tag here. What I want to do is not put the L foot control, it's the L foot goal. So now it's going to work. Yep. So you see I have my uh, toes rolling for work cycle, but my toes are moving along with the, the rotation and I want them to stay on the ground. So in order to do that, we are going to use one last constraint and I'm going to tell uh, this joint to always target in front of him. So in order to do that, I'm going to create this joint a target. So I'm going to create another object. It's going to be L toes target. And I'm going to put it under the toes con no, above the toes control, because I don't want to rotate when I uh, rotate the toes control. I want it to be static. So it's go going to go under the left foot control. So I'm going to come and slap it over here and move it forward. And I'm going to freeze it uh, later. So now I go to my left toe, right click, reading tag, constraint, and into my constraint, instead of using a transform constraint, I'm going to use a, an aim constraint. To tell my joint to aim this point here. So aim, you see that my joint is gone, uh, it's gone backwards actually in this direction. Because you see it's uh, targeting the Z plus axis, but if I come and take my uh, target and put it over here. Now it is targeting my point here. And if I move my point, you see my null. You see that the toes are following, meaning that now if I take my left toes control and rotate it, it rotates, it rotates uh, the skeleton and the leg the leg, but not the, the toes. So the toes are staying on the ground. So this is it for the eye carrying of the leg. Maybe we can hide the uh, pull, uh, pull vector to finish. So I'm going to my uh, IK tag and it's here. You can see pull vector. You are just going to click on add pull. It's going to uh, add uh, an, an object. I'm going to put it under my foot, for instance and I'm going to move it forward and you see a pink line and what it does it's actually um, setting a target for the knee so if I move it around like so you see that the, the leg is following the pull vector so this is it for the leg I'm going to display everything here so now I need uh, to tell the uh, joints to follow my controllers up here because now they are just moving alone and they are not taking the joints with them. So what I have to do is the same thing that we did with uh, the constraint here, which is uh, putting a constraint, a transform constraint, in order to copy paste the coordinates of the controllers onto the joints. So I'm just going to uh, freeze it all in case I make a mistake. 
and now I'm going to take the hips, uh, the spine, the torso, uh, and everything here. So shoulder, arm for arm, hand, neck, head, and I'm going to right click, rigging tag, constraint. So you see I have a constraint everywhere now. I'm going to activate the transform constraint in order to tell C4D to copy paste the coordinates that are here onto here. Okay, maintain original, and now I have to go one by one. So for the hips, I'm going to put uh, the pelvis, uh, and then spine is going to be a spine, torso, torso, and so on. So shoulder, shit. Shoulder, arm, forearm, and neck and head so now when i come and grab my controller here you see it's moving everything alongside it because i have constrained my uh, my uh, joints to follow my controllers okay so now uh, we are almost uh, ready so I have my uh, skeleton and my joints. My skeleton and my controller, sorry. And I'm going to grab everything on the left side and copy paste it onto the right side. So I'm going to select everything named L underscore something. So all the joints and all the controllers. Okay. And I'm going to character uh, mirror tool. I'm going to open it up here. So what it does, it's going to uh, to take uh, your uh, your geometry, your constraints, etc., and copy paste it from the right to the left. So we are going to copy on. Uh, uh, the axis uh, YZ, so yes, it's a good one. Plus to minus, so this is plus, this is minus, it's good. And we are going to rotate uh, our joints and uh, controllers. We are going to clone the tags and we are going to change the naming from L underscore. From L underscore to and here, underscore and click mirror so i'm just checking that it's working it's look it looks like it is yes yes and yes okay so i have my full skeleton except for the hands and of course facial rig but uh, you have the idea of it and you can uh, keep doing it for the hands uh, if you want to so i'm going to create a new null at the way to name controls i'm going to create a new uh, null that i'm going to name master i'm going to take the inside make it on the ground and make it like three side and I'm going to rotate, take the points and rotate it so that it's facing forward, like so. So master, and I'm going to put my controllers inside. So now when I move the master, uh, Everything is following. It's under control. So now I have three parts. I have my geometry, I have my joints, and I have my controllers that are control controlling my joints. But my joints I are not controlling my geometry yet. We're going to uh, remedy to that. But first, I'm going to take uh, my controls and my joints, right click, select children, coordinates, and now we're going to freeze it all so that it's all at zero. 
Uh, now I want to bind my geometry to my joints, which means that I want my geometry to follow my joints. So the operation is named binding, uh, meaning that I'm going to tell the points to be uh, influenced by the joints. In order to do that, I can select uh, uh, my uh, geometry and we are going to see how the character is made. Urban, hair, tongue, uh, I don't care about, about the tongue, the teeth, the balls, I'm going to keep that, the head, which is that, okay, hands, uh, Uji, zipper, I'm going to put it uh, below, and this is, okay, I'm going to uh, actually, for the zipper, you will need to put another joint here in order to control that specifically, but I'm just going to delete it for this tutorial. Okay, so now I want to select my uh, my geometry. So the legs, the, we did the hands uh, for the balls and the teeth. Uh, yes, I'm going to select it too and see what happens. And then I'm going to take my joints and select everything. I don't need to select the end because the end is actually this part here and doesn't control anything. So spine torso, make sure you don't select the null object. The hand, the hand, the neck and the head tip, same as uh, the end of the toes here. It's not interesting because it doesn't control anything, so I don't select it. Then I'm going to character bind. And we have options here. By default, it is set to heat map. And uh, we can just click OK and see what happens. So you can see in your uh, object manager that uh, uh, the operation put uh, a new tag onto your object. It's a white tag, meaning that uh, now you have uh, uh, influences that are uh, recorded uh, for this object, influences of this joints here recorded for this object hairband, and you have a skin tag which is uh, a deformer telling Cinema 4D that now this object is going to deform. So if I take my control here and move it, you see that now it is moving my arm. If I take this, it is moving like so. So if I take the hips, it moves. So it did a pretty good job, but uh, the geometry is very simple, so it's quite easy to uh, to do an automatic uh, weighting. I think if I take the shoulders, okay. The head, the head is not good, you see. And the neck. Uh, so we are going to do a bit of correction here, uh, meaning that when I uh, lower my arm here, this should not go inside the body, it should stay uh, the same. So it should be influenced by, uh, I guess, more this bone here than this bone here. So we are going to uh, do what is called white painting. Uh, in order to do that, I'm going to go to... Uh, um, I've got uh, an interface set up here, but you don't have it. So you go to character and the first thing you see, you can't see it on my screen, I'm sorry, is manager. And inside manager, you are going to click on to the weight manager and it's going to put, uh, to make this window pop up. Okay. So it's character manager, weight manager. I'm just going to click on the interface I made. Shit, sorry. So I've got my weight manager here. And I'm going to take my, my weight tool here. So the weight tool is under character. Uh, weight tool. But I put a shortcut here. And I'm going to select my uh, hoodie geometry. And you see, it's 
it's colorful now. And if I go to my joints here, you can see that each color is matching a joint. And I would like my, uh, my uh, arm here to not influence this part of the body. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take my uh, spine and uh, for the spine, I'm going to paint influences all around the character here so that it's uh, fully influenced by the spine. So I'm going to take my weight, minute, my weight uh, tool attribute here and I'm going to put uh, the mode into absolute meaning I'm going to paint one a value of 100% for the bone that is selected here. So if I paint, I'm applying a 100% value uh, of uh, the bone spine onto this, um, these points. So I'm going to go around the character like this. And for the torso, I'm going to paint here and there. So now that I put the 100% influence uh, of the torso onto these points, now when I grab my shoulder and move it, you see that it's not moving this point anymore. And so you should go around uh, your whole character in order to do that properly for every bone. For instance, if I go to my face, and I'm going to uh, make a keyframe here, put a keyframe there, and move it up like so. I want my face to influence my chin here, my face joint. So I'm going to go to my face geometry, which um, is that, which is a uh, head here. And I'm going to take the head control, the head joint, sorry. So you see that it's not uh, influencing uh, this part of the body because it must be influenced by the neck, yes. So I'm going to the head. I'm taking my uh, my weight tool. I'm going to, so to set it to absolute. And I'm just going to paint. Yes. Until uh, my face is... correctly uh, influenced by the joint. Oops, oops, okay. And if you want to smooth the insides of that page here. If you want to smooth the deformation, you can now set the mode from absolute to smooth and come smooth the deformation here, like so. But on this model, I don't think it's necessary. So now my head is following uh, like I want it to. Okay, and I think we are almost done. You see that on the foot, it's not quite all right. Uh, this is a bit influenced by the leg here, obviously. It should not, so you should come. And also uh, paint weights here for uh, for the foot. Meaning that you take the shoulder legs, I guess. And you go to the right foot, left foot. And you go to your tool absolute and you fluid it 100% so that the, the influences are good. Something like that. And so on for the rest of the character. Uh, but you see that the laces are not following. So if you have uh, small objects onto your uh, your uh, character and you uh, you don't want to uh, to white paint everything uh, you can use a deformer to tell a visuometry to follow this geometry which is very useful uh, so you can take your laces here and you can go to your deformer take the surface deformer it's a deformer so it goes under your geometry 
and into the object you see you have a slot to set uh, the surface and we want uh, the laces to follow uh, the leg so i'm going to just put the leg here the leg here and click initialize the object uh, influenced by the surface deformer have to be below the object that uh, they are following into the rig which is uh, the legs in this case uh, otherwise it's going to follow uh, one frame uh, it's going to lag it's going to follow one frame later because in M4D you read the hierarchy from top to bottom so now when I take my foot my laces are following and if I rotate the foot here it's following as well okay display beam and if you want uh, your rig to look professional uh, you could go to your joint show your controllers and give them color so into the basic display color and usually i like to put pink from the master so the hips is going to be pink as well oh. and then for the spine it's usually yellow or green this case is going to be green and for the right and left side, it's usually a red and a blue. So all the left side are going to be set to red. And all the right side is going to be set to blue. Custom. No blue. Okay. And if you want to see your pole vectors here that we uh, set up to be automatic so it's an object, you can just go to your poles here, select them, object, and we are going to put pyramids. I'm going to put them small. And I'm going to uh, turn them back uh, in order to face the knee so it looks better something like that okay so if i move it yes so now you have a controller for the hips you have a controller for the pelvis if you want your character to dance etc etc and you can start to animate your character okay this is it for this tutorial i hope it was helpful helpful i know i went fast but it's a video so you can always go back and uh, and see it again bye bye